Good evening and welcome to Nikos Newsday. I'm Jonathan Albin and your host and I want to thank you for joining us for this first uh, full report uh, on the adventures and campaigns of the world of Nikos for this uh, first uh, week of September. We are going to be covering uh, all of the current campaigns that are active in the world of Nikos that includes uh, group uh, names, uh, Heralds of the Change, the Random Rovers, which may be changing. Uh, no, I'm sorry, yes. The uh, Voyage of the Arcane Eye, the Skiffborn, and the Strangers in a Strange Land campaigns. So that, that's quite a lot of information from around, uh, across the nation and around the world, so to speak, in the world of Nikos. And so we will be utilizing our map projection page to uh, refer to the specifics of each of these groups. We're going to be talking about what they're doing and perhaps dropping some Easter eggs about what's going on in each of the campaigns uh, to the best of my ability to keep everybody engaged in what's going on, but also to acknowledge the direction of each of the groups. If you have not yet uh, followed this channel, make sure to do that. Um, thank you for being here. If you are a new guest, make sure that you uh, get your account with uh, Twitch qualified so you can leave me a text message or, uh, in the chat and I'll be glad to converse with you during the session as well. And we have so much to cover. It's uh, it's really heating up in this, the ninth iteration of Nikos. So we're going to basically go over each of the campaigns in sort of chronological order. Uh, therefore, I'll be speaking of the first one that falls during a week, which will be the Strangers in a Strange Land. Which, I'm sorry, that's not true. The uh, Heralds of the Change will be the first group we're going to talk about. And Heralds of the Change is one of our uh, longer-lived groups in that we have Persona in this campaign that survived the end of the 8th iteration, and rather than... Uh, being conveyed into the iterational boundary and limitation of being avatars have decided to actually proceed in their lives into the ninth iteration and of particular note one of those players is a sixth iteration character who is reprising his role so to speak by stepping out of time into the um, Heralds of the Chain Change group and in particular this last week or last two weeks I should say that particular player kind of came into his own as he dispatched the uh, Prime the Proteus Prime and successfully eliminated a threat to the uh, Frelarin peoples of Haven and the southern boundary region of the Inundaran forest from the clutches of a fundamentally a Mykonid uh, threat. 
and took out a cord basically an oversized cordyceps uh, infestation so to a uh, great fanfare the the persona known as storm crow not only reflected well upon himself but upon all of the iterations hmm the enjoined he represented well his position as an enjoined with more than almost 3,000 years of personal history invested in the story uh, uh, the character uh, Storm Crow has elevated himself in the, 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 the line of the story of the world of Nikos even more so in this iteration than in his uh, previous iteration so long ago now <coughs> that group has continued its adventures by moving from the place of that great success and has engaged with the nobles in particular of the Inandaran forest and have become uh, or have taken a, a taken an audience with the empress herself and the onus that had been placed on storm crow by a previous empress was not apparently able to be resolved and yet a new quest and a new task has been laid at the feet of the heralds of the change so we will see how that proceeds but the vanquishing of the Proteus Prime by the use of a Morgul blade appropriately positioned and placed really did a lot to improve the demeanor and the focus of the heralds in general next group beyond the heralds of change are the strangers in a strange land who have found themselves in the city of El Sadar and beyond just visiting their local relatives which was the auspices with which they came to El Sadar the primary character of Marianne and kind of instigated a push for the adventurers under the color of their authority as the representatives of Jadarun insinuated themselves into the very conversation of the leadership of El Sadar and the kingdom of Eldrassar more generally in their relationship with the other middle kingdoms and got involved with uh, a discovery of the attempted assassination of the king of Florin. This attempt was uh, visited upon the this hapless king by apparently a sect gem who brought a morgul blade to the fight scene so to speak and yet was unable to f complete his task and thereby the players rescued and prevented the death of the king of Florin and the way in which they made their attempt <clears throat> was definitely worthy of a song and there was no real <clears throat> pardon me there was there was no real um validation of the attempt because the players did succeed in literally driving the would-be assassin literally off the plane utilizing a weapon that they they themselves had recovered and instead uh, dispatched this would be assassin uh, to the plane of the invisible so 
the city of El, El Sadar and the kingdom of El Dusar is now safer because of it. But there's also been a clear unification of the realms under a blanket leader who is being called the uh, Imperator. So we will figure out what that means in fewer we future weeks. But the Imperator has now formally taken responsibility and leadership over all three of the Middle Kingdoms. So that will be rather dramatic in the future. <clears throat> Moving on to our third group, uh, which is the Skiffborn. They have uh, arrived at the uh, Tangerine Ziggurat and have begun the exploration of it. They've discovered that there is affiliation or location of co-location between the Ziggurat and the Plane of Shadow, the penumbral plane, as, you, as, it, as it were, and are in the process of <clears throat> attempting to verify the imprisonment of one being that they expected or anticipated to be Zothar, the master of beasts, and instead they have discovered that the person that, the person that is imprisoned there is someone who is more colloquial, colloquial, no, wow, colloquially known as tongue eater or eater of tongues, and that his his actual name is Baphomet, and the jailers are concerned that the person being held is is being held improperly and without proper cause, and so they're. Uh, dealing with the possibility that the those who are in, watching over his imprisonment are wishing to have him released as he is not the person who's supposed to be held in this particular facility as a matter of fact it seems to be that Xylans uh, Zo uh, is uh, intended to be imprisoned in the uh, Tangerine Ziggurat and so, therefore, they are trying to figure out what that means and how to go about finding which of the ziggurats that Zothar, that, that Zylance is in, and how to recapture Zothar, since apparently the wrong master of beasts has been serving this iteration's rather long sentence. So, something hinky is definitely going on there. Finally, the last piece of the story for this week, before we go into the actual conjecture and perhaps some of the Easter eggs, is that the uh, new adventuring group on Saturday mornings is the Voyage of the Arcane Eye, Arcan, actually Arcan Eye, a uh, group that is dedicated to uh, di uh, embarking from the southern boundaries of Nikos and moving into the un undiscovered country of the Black Waters to the south. So they have, in their own turn, been driven by, by, by uh, strong winds directly into the uh, vicinity of the uh, what they are referring to as the Amber Zig Cigarette. And so they are now looking into that. And they have found a species of diminutive, and we're talking much smaller than mere pygmies, diminutive warriors that have the fashioned style of the Maori uh, warriors of New, New Guinea and are um, uh, determining whether or not they want to engage with the Maori directly or whether they are going to be uh, kind of standoffish. They have, have seen the threat there and are determining what they are going to be doing. 
So now, now let's let's back up a second and talk about what's the, on the larger scale. We are in the ninth iteration, and we have already verified several points of mutual agreement that the ninth the ninth iteration is indeed in uh, underway, and the purpose uh, is a historical poem that provides oversight or outline of that which must be accomplished in the ninth iteration for the for any given iteration to be concluded. And while one or two groups have clearly gone through similarly with a fine tooth comb and trying to figure out how they their adventures can be interpreted as pieces of this poem, yet there are a lot of loose ends that have not yet been anchored down. So I'm not going to go into the details of that particular poem because it is the players, not uh, myself as the director, who chooses the course of this progress. But the elements of it that are in play uh, include the following, and I'm not going to go to them in particular order, but the appearance of the object in the sky, which was at least originally known as the candle and later is now known as the scroll, has manifested in the skies over Nikos and have subsequently fallen from that position and manifested as the firefall. And firefall fundamentally was burning wreckage that descended upon the mountain range from uh, the area of Valora to the north all the way south to east of uh, Canaveral. And that entire mountain range, therefore, is representative of devastating uh, infernal or, or burning, specifically fire, based attacks across the majority of the Primus population. Targeted attacks also went against the Primus in the area of southern Elwendale and also across the sea in the region of the Farthfall Mountains uh, as part of the Grithwall. So it seems like the race under persecution in this iteration might be the Primus who have suffered extremely, <clears throat> extremely great losses across all of these locales. And so it's, it's not looking good for the Primus as a species. Conversely, at least one group has interacted with a group that may or may not be in the, in the midst of, or in the process of uh, time theft or, or, or even uh, time banditry, <laughs> if you will. And that is a primus uh, master of time, a, a chronomancer, if you will, uh, known as Malsalil, has apparently uh, absconded with a considerable arsenal of Eldrin weapons that in theory, shouldn't even be here. And so that's going to be causing some concern as we're not specifically sh sure or certain from which time frame this bandit came, and nor do we know where his fell deeds are going to end up having their greatest result. So with, with that, Therefore, then the question starts to become open about where these chronological glitches or errors are coming from. And the players are the ones who are actually going to be determining how they interpret it. And so if you're watching this and you're one of my audience and one of my players, I propose to you that you guys will have to put your brains together collectively and kind of decide which of these steps that's being done is suitable for the purpose and which ones of these are left for later uh, interaction. 
having said that, <clears throat> I also wanted to mention the fact that with these current uh, campaign arcs, the stories are definitely continuing and there are private campaigns that are going on of which I am the, the host and I will be including those in future reports once I've gotten approval from the other game uh, participants that I can include them. They are private affairs but they are in the world of Nikos in the contemporaneous position and so therefore have the potential of having their input, inputs affect the overall campaign arc. So we'll be getting that permission in the next week or so. But in the meantime, the four games that we're speaking of are continuing. And I haven't really talked that much about the coastal unit. I did mention the fact that they did make a landfall. But one thing I didn't get the opportunity to talk about is that the previous week they actually used their diving technology, their... They've got a few gadgets, so to speak, and they dive. They dived on the ruins of a great seed ship that dated some time back to near the sixth iteration. And while they only found a few tchotchkes, they did find that the craft has considerably more to offer in terms of good dive potential. If they if only they try, they choose to come back and do that in the future, so that dive record is actually part of now the lore the lore of Nikos, and so therefore players may mm, sort of break away from the traditional storylines of Nikos and actually begin the southward expansion and the exploration of the regions. Uh, beyond the borders and so I look forward to having that Saturday campaign as a new angle and it also looks like we'll be adding a new role play roulette process on Saturdays coming up in the future at uh, two o'clock in the afternoons so if you are in the Redlands area and are not yet involved in one of our campaigns this is a great opportunity to get involved in a role play roulette and the Nikos RPG mechanism as it advances. So, the snippets that I've gone over basically are what I had to cover. The let's let's uh, take a minute and go to the map room though, so we can talk about where these activities are occurring in a, a frame of reference. If I can get my map. Oop. 